Well, hey, Regal United Methodist Church, it's Bobby, uh, your Connections Director and Communications Director, uh, joined tonight as well by Pastor Chris, our Senior Pastor. Uh, each week, uh, this will be our third time now, we've been checking in after the sermon and continuing the sermon just as a way kind of to give you a little bit additional content, uh, but maybe some additional thoughts and uh, just a little bit of ourselves and kind of what we're going through in this time. So we want to welcome you here with us in this time encourage you to participate in the chat uh, we'll see it uh, and uh, be able to interact with you some more there and uh, if you if you tune in this past sunday we talked about uh, giving giving up spending money that i don't have as a part of our lent series uh, called give up something that matters and uh, so we talked about giving up spending money right that that i don't have um, not just giving up spending money but spending money that we don't have and so you know, people, people do crazy stuff with money. Um, uh, so I, we thought it'd be fun to kind of check in and, and uh, you know, Chris, what's one thing you've, you've bought or you regretted? Yeah, so uh, I, I, we, um, a few years back, did buy a, a brand new car. And, uh, you know, that is not necessarily the best form of investment. Mm -hmm. And you find that out really, really quickly. Um, I actually... I, you know, I was a one owner to that car actually, and, and, and saw it, you know, I sold it to my mechanic. That's, that's basically how that story ends. Wow. So, um, but you know, the other, the other thing it was, uh, we always, uh, one of the conflicts I had early on in a former relationship, and I'll just say that is, you know, the battle over eating out mm. and not, and not even so much like nice restaurants, but whether or not it really was cheap uh, to eat out at a fast food place. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't think it is, <laughs> don't, especially when you have three boys, um, you know, and I don't think you're saving money. Um, there might be other reasons for doing it or even doing it on occasion, whether it's just fun for them or what they want, or just, you don't have the energy, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, that adds up even inexpensive eating mm -hmm. out adds up. Mm -hmm. And, I'm a bargain shopper, coupon guy, not afraid to admit it, proud of it as a matter of fact. On Kroger, they have a picture of me. Watch out for this guy. He knows all our he knows all our inside stuff, right? Um, and you know, to spend in the course of a month, you know, a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty dollars on fast food, mm. I can buy a lot of groceries. Right. A lot of groceries at a place like Kroger or perhaps for you it's Publix or you know, somewhere else. Um, once you know their system and all that. So yeah, you know. What about you? Yeah, I think uh, we we've become better at money um, over the last couple of years. But um, when we first moved into our new house in Ringgold, um, uh, it's an older house, right. uh, a new house for us. But uh, first time home buyers uh, really didn't know a whole lot of what we were doing or mm -hmm. or uh, what to look for and that kind of stuff. And we've been renting a lot before then. So you know, if something breaks in a rental, you just call your landlord, and yeah. you know they fix it from there. Right. As a homeowner, all that's on you. And so we were moving in, and uh, we did some inspections and that kind of stuff. And and uh, with our agent and sort of the inspector, we realized that man, our windows were just trash. Yeah. Um, they uh, all kinds of leaks, all kinds of mess just going on in the windows. Uh, air leaks and water leaks going on. <laughs> and so um, we happen to be like at uh, this this sort of um, uh, business fair type thing and. Uh, we got overtaken by a, a salesman that was very good at his job. And uh, before we knew it. He had a it, great year. Yes. Yeah. Before we knew it, this salesman, you know, had, had sold us on this, showed up at our house within, I think, two or three days after that. And, uh, man, he brought all the props, all the tools, and, and really just um, took us for a ride. Yeah. In you were in. That. All in. Yeah. And, and, you know, what we, what we really needed to do is we did need to buy new windows. We really needed kind of the Honda version of it, but we ended up buying the Cadillac. <laughs> and um, really, I mean, we've got great windows. Hey, you got great windows. <laughs> <laughs> but they were expensive. Yeah, you're uh, paying for them yeah. too, yeah. No doubt about that, how expensive <laughs> those were. Um, you know, and one of the things you mentioned about, you know, uh, eating out versus uh, uh, shopping and preparing and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, right now with where we're at and, and most people not being able to go out as much, yeah. that's that's a big thing going on right now. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was kind of joking with somebody and I said, it's funny how people have rediscovered their ability to cook. Yes. You know, right yes. now. 
It's amazing, right? Yeah, but yeah, it, it's a, a lot of discoveries like that are happening mm -hmm. um, because we cannot do things like we normally do. And uh, when those things are just not available to us, or not at least in the same format, mm -hmm. um, it really kind of puts us in a new place of um, self awareness mm -hmm. and um, self uh, uh, kind of evaluation. Uh, and so, yeah, we, yeah, it's certainly possible that we're discovering, oh gosh, this, I can cook and, mm -hmm. you know, look at this and, mm -hmm. um, and you might discover a little bit more in the checkbook at the end of the month too. It's amazing mm -hmm. how quickly money can disappear from us, mm -hmm. um, in just normal everyday routine activities that aren't anything outlandish or really all that expensive you know, on the onset, you know, and generally speaking, mm -hmm. boy, they add up. Oh, they do. They, they do. add up. I think one of the one of the biggest things for us was tracking what we were spending and where we were spending and different categories and that kind of stuff. And even now, as we're trying to figure out a budget, sure. you know, in this season, um, you know, one of the, several of the categories have have sort of shifted from one to the other, and and you know, and we're trying to prepare for you know um, contingencies and and. Mm -hmm thinking through what ifs and stuff like that. And, right. you know, that same sort of process um, in some people leads them to prepare. I think in some people it, it leads them to some really sort of interesting decisions like hoarding, for instance. Oh, gosh, yeah. Right? Right. Um, I was uh, driving by a neighbor in your, in your neighborhood when we were doing the 6 p.m. wave, and, and um, uh, she came out and I looked in her driveway and she had floor to ceiling stacks of uh, toilet paper and paper towels and and so I told Pastor Chris if he needed some there's there's somebody I know who to go to <laughs> I know who to go down and lock in and you know put to take my beggar's hat off and say please can I have some toilet paper yeah, yeah. why do uh, people do that though what what's going on there you know I think it has to do with the message that I, I preach I think it um, you, you know in times of crisis in times of uh, potential panic, mm -hmm. right? Um, if we're not prepared, if we if we haven't worked our spiritual plan of stewardship, of you know generosity, of of the what maybe some people have heard at this point, kind of the Joseph model, mm -hmm. which is the saving twenty percent. Mm -hmm. uh, I did very I just ever so quickly mm -hmm. glanced at that in the right. sermon, uh, mm -hmm. but it is something that I do model and live off of. In fact, I'm saying more than 20% have been for a while for my own personal reasons uh, that, that some folks know about. Um, but, uh, you know, if you haven't done that, um, it is scary, you know, and you can react and it, it's uh, people, you know, um, out of a lack of preparation or, or just an absolute, um, you know, terror of if they don't provide for themselves, they're in trouble. Uh, that's a horrible way to live. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in judgment. I'm like, oh, you bad person. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, think about being there, mm -hmm. right? That you can't trust anybody, that you you, you feel alone, mm -hmm. that it's up to you uh, and only you. And if not you, you know, you're going to be whatever, starved or not have toilet paper, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, gosh, that's, uh, you know, some of the practical advice that we talked about in the sermon, it, you know, first of all, just don't panic. Don't make those goofy decisions. You know, get sober-minded, um, prioritize. Um, and then, you know, start with your family, check in with them. You know, families are families. And, and maybe you don't have a, a biological family, but you have a church family. Or you, you have some friendships that are like family. Mm -hmm. You know, those close-knit groups, we... We share, and, and invariably, invariably, somebody in your family or in your social circle is going to be somebody that practiced the Joseph model or whatever it was, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't call it that or whatever. And part of what we do, those of us that are that are already there, that have learned some of these principles, we're doing it not just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're doing it to help, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can be in a position where if needed, we could stretch our resources on benefit of, of someone else for any number of reasons. Um, that that's part of that thinking. It's and there again, but that goes back to not, it's me and only me and I have to take care of me and mine. It's no, I have a provider. I'm trusting in the provider to help me learn principles to live my everyday life. And those principles in part teach me to not just think of myself, but to prepare and to be ready to share and give, you know, routinely, but also in crisis. Mm -hmm. 
that's that's part of our spirituality mm -hmm. so yeah I, a friend of mine said uh, uh, today actually she said uh, you know where the, where one pe person eats two people can eat mm -hmm. right and so if there's enough there for someone to have a meal then there's a way to split that mm -hmm. and share right um, that that something can be can be uh, can be distributed right. in that sense and you know that that's one of those really important lessons um, in our faith and our, our faith development and right. what it means to be a community of faith is, yes you know and, and not in a you know sort of a, a silly kind of way but we're in this together we are you know and and depending on each other and working with each other and sometimes one of the hardest things to do is to get over that pride yeah that um you know you know get past that judgment of i wonder people what people are going to think about me or what are they going to say if right. if i have to ask for help or, or whatever if i you know if i just ask right you know and then it, it, it could work out there are right. people that i have that that can be that generosity in my life too right um bigger than just like you know the hoarding the 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 sort of weird stuff that's happening like yeah. hoarding toilet paper or you know hoarding uh, paper towels or hand sanitizer for that instance good gracious that happened in our in our own area right made national news about a guy that stockpiled hand yeah sanitizer. in order to sell it yeah and, and they he sold it and uh you know hiked the price um uh. you know sometimes our our possessions can end up possessing us yes. or we get possessed by our possessions right and and jesus spoke a lot about a that, lot right? Yeah, that's the central question. I mentioned that again. That was just kind of one line in the sermon. But um, that, is, that is one way to frame many of the parables that Jesus talked about mm -hmm. with regard to money, using money as an illustration or, or pointing to money or possessions as, the, as kind of the theme of that particular parable. Mm -hmm. um, one way to frame all of that is to, is to say that Jesus was trying to, was always putting stories in front of us or thoughts in front of us to help us evaluate um, whether or not we in fact actually own our, our you know our stuff and our money or if our stuff and our possessions to really own us and mm -hmm. own our soul and it's you know that's a question that it's not that you answer it once and you're fine you know you you, you know that, that is by our nature you know we have we have an I know this is true for me. Maybe it's true for you as well. I, but th there seems to be an insatiable desire for more. Mm -hmm. Right? We're always wanting more, no matter where we are. And w when we get it, it doesn't f satisfy it. Right. No, the, the, whatever more we seek, no matter how much more we get, never quenches that insatiable desire for more. Mm -hmm. And so the check on it is not more stuff but generosity. Mm. Uh, that thinking through and, and that's what kind of recalibrates the trajectory of our thoughts that recalibrates our value system where, you know, and, and, and when I say recalibrate, it's not like, you know, maybe some of us need a major shift, in, you know, but a lot of us, it's just the, it's just this, hmm. you know, we, you know, Jesus spoke to the masses and, and, you know, most of us, you know, we're not going a million miles off the path. We're just straying from the path, mm -hmm. you know. We're, we're just, you know, we're 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 off mm -hmm. a little bit, and by putting generosity in front of us, uh, even in a time of crisis, maybe especially in a time of crisis, and saying, okay, now what is it that we, what do we really need to live on, and and where are we being generous? Are we being generous enough? Um, you, you know, that kind of that puts us in a different framework. As, as a matter of fact, the the real spiritual question isn't how much I dare give, but how much do I dare keep? Mm -hmm. That's that's the real spirituality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been a, a, a deep lesson uh, that I'm still working on. Oh, um, all of us. You know, all and, of us. And, yes. And I don't I don't propose to be a, a master in this, but you know, there's this to realize that that we're but stewards of God. Yeah, we don't own it anyway. It's yeah. not ours anyway. Exactly. Which is you know back you know real quickly back to the hoarding right. That, yeah. That's kind of that 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 is in principle something that is really not understood. We don't. I mean. I'm a provider and I'm a planner and I, I buy things in bulk. So I get sort of what's trying to be done, but that's really it going askew yeah. and f totally forgetting it. Look, we don't own anything anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, come on. Right. You know. Right. And we do, we've got this mindset sometimes that it, if I just had more money, right? You mentioned oh, yeah. that. If I, if I just had more, 
more resources or probably for some people right now, if I just had more toilet paper, you know, right. uh, if I just had more of whatever, uh, more time even, right? right? That's a, which, it, that's which is crazy. Right, right, right. I mean, isn't that great? Because that's one of those things right now. We no longer have the excuse yep. to say, <laughs> I don't have the time. Right. You know, I, I'm, I'm so mad at myself right now. I'm like, I know I should be doing more reading than what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And yet what, what is going on? And uh, I think that's also part of our exhaustion right now is because so much of our time and energy is spent trying to evaluate, all right, what is it that I need to do right now? Mm -hmm. And that's normally you don't have to think as much about that as what we're thinking mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. I know for a lot of parents, uh, families this week, uh, I hope this week is a little bit of a reprieve from the school uh, from what we've been doing, right? With yeah. the online learning. And, and I know for us that yesterday and today and, and hopefully this week will be a little bit of just a little bit more peace, a little bit more, yeah. less stress in the midst of this. Cause we don't have to do, you know, the logs or get on at certain times <laughs> or whatever that, that stuff looks like. And, um, and it's crazy hard for us because I'll end up having phone calls at the same time my wife has her online teaching and the same time my kids are supposed to be doing their online learning. And, and I know you, you, you're in similar situations there too. And it's just, yep. it's been interesting to try to um, put all the puzzle pieces together. <laughs> Navigate all through that. And then you find yourself just exhausted and tired. And so yeah. you pat yourself on your back. I think I said this week one, be kind to yourself. <laughs> it, it's all, it's, we're all doing the best we can. Absolutely. I love that idea of generosity, though. Just thinking about um, living our life in that way. Um, I do think a lot of people live in sort of a scarcity mindset. With, the yes. idea that resources are limited and that time is limited and, and, and everything has an expiration date and, and sort of the scarcity mindset is mm -hmm. what it's normally called. Right. Um, but what I love as a, as a follower of Jesus is that's not the way it works mm -hmm. at all. Uh, we serve a God of unlimited resources, uh, unlimited power, unlimited potential. I mean, those are all those really big theological words, right? Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. I mean, that all, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. and, and God has all that as, at, at God's disposal. Um, and, and that's who we serve, right? which is an amazing thing for us to, to constantly remember. Right. Well, and you know, and it's, and I was just thinking it's, Again, that 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 small course correction, mm -hmm. right? Most of us aren't aren't needing, you know, huge swings. It's just because the scarcity and stewardship, mm -hmm. right? To be a good steward means I'm not going to be wasteful, mm -hmm. right? But you know, I'm 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 going to recognize that I'm you know I'm not going to be I'm not I'm not going to hoard. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be a glutton in you know in the sense of, of my life and you know and. And so it's just, you know, but that, you can go from kind of a principle like that very quickly into it's all about me and, you know, that if I don't get this, I'll never have it. Mm. Um, and we need those course corrections of mm. trusting in God's provision and God's challenge to us to, to, to really figure out what it is that we, what we need to live on. Um, and, and. Spend, you know, as far as spending money, not to spend money we don't have, mm -hmm. but to, to back that off, to make sure that we're making generosity the priority and savings mm -hmm. the priority, not just for ourselves, but for our children, grandchildren, the, those in need. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and living off much more of a modest, modest means trusting God all along, that God owns it all anyhow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think in a, in a bigger sense for us as a church, this is what we've been doing and, and working through these last couple of weeks is what does it mean for us to be a church? And, and yeah. um, not in some grand, huge theological way. I mean, we're still the church. We're not in this crisis necessarily like that. But we're thinking through how, how do we do church like, like that in this time? And what does it mean for us to, to do some different and creative kinds of things? And uh, I've been really proud of our staff and, yeah. and willingness to try things, yes. do things differently, have a little bit of fun, you know, make yes. some new mistakes, for instance, yep. in yeah. the midst of it. Um, and so we, we've been having, you know, some some live moments over the last two weeks. And I want to encourage you to, to continue to connect with us in those things. Um, we've sort of created this idea of online church. And we really want to be your online church in this time. 
Uh, we're a church uh, in every sense, in every way of what it means to be a church. We're just online. And so we want to be that for you in this time. And I want to encourage you to check things out over the next couple weeks. Uh, most of our stuff will center around uh, social media outlets and our website. Those are the two places really to find a lot of our stuff. So uh, on Wednesday, Heather will be checking in with uh, some Bible trivia. Oh, it's going to so, be fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. So what we want you to do is, is jump on that. That's going to be a live stream on Facebook uh, where she's going to ask some questions. You'll be able to answer in the chat and all that kind of stuff and, and really have a lot of fun in a, kind of a, almost like a game show format with her. Uh, on Thursday, I'm going to do uh, basically like some live office hours um, or a, a live 30 minute half office hour, we'll say. Uh, and uh, I want you to check in with me and uh, kicking that virtual door open. Yeah, yeah. Kicking come. the virtual door open. Let you anybody can come in the office, sit down, chat with you, have a seat on this uh, virtual couch that's Absolutely. never ending. It's this so long. Yeah, anybody, plenty yeah. of space for everybody. That's good. Hey, ask me anything in that time. I, I may regret that at the end of it, but I would <laughs> love for you to tune in and uh, feel free to. Uh, come with some stuff. I'll have some ideas and things to talk about in that time. That's on Thursday. Uh, on Friday, uh, Jonathan and a couple of our uh, contemporary worship leaders will be uh, doing uh, basically kind of last week we did a uh, hymn request live. This week we're going to do some contemporary worship live. Uh, so come with those songs and input and uh, uh, and they'll be uh, pulling that off on the spot for you. Uh, our kids' worship premieres on Saturday uh, at 3 p.m. And uh, we wanted to do that at a convenient time. Watch it when you want to with your kids, but midday on uh, Saturday so you can check that out and, and participate in kids' worship. And then, of course, our online uh, worship services uh, premiere on Facebook at 9 and 11 on Sunday morning. Those are also on YouTube and linked on our Facebook. Facebook site and on our website, so you can check those out. And, and if you're tech savvy, you can stream those uh, straight onto your uh, smart TVs. Pastor Chris, you've been doing something every night as well. Yeah, and of course I'll see you every night at six o'clock. Uh, if you uh, want to friend me on Facebook, that's uh, fine. Also, my, my Facebook profile is open, general to the public, so you don't necessarily have to be my friend to see it. Um, but yeah, every night at six o'clock, I'm going live on my porch called Six PM Wave. Get together without getting together. Uh, hashtag viral kindness. So um, the idea is to wave at your neighbors, make a connection. Uh, I've met more neighbors in my neighborhood than I mm. have since I moved in. Um, uh, plus seeing some of the ones that I already did know and saying hi to them. Uh, it's been good. It's been, it's been really good. If you live in the middle of nowhere, hey, go out to your porch anyway. Uh, get some fresh air, uh, take a picture, put it in my feed or my comments rather, uh, or do your own Facebook Live and connect with family and friends at that moment. So uh, it's just a chance to be community and remember we're not alone uh, and encourage others. We, we've had some good responses. So mm -hmm. I'll see you at six o'clock every night in addition to continuing the sermon and in worship. So we wanna be your online church. Absolutely. So yeah, Wrangled United Methodist Church, we are your online church in this time. And uh, we just wanna say God bless you. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's gonna to be great. Continue to connect with us online. See you next time. See ya.